Okay, let's keep the ball rolling with another example. In this example, we're going to try and figure out what negative 64 to the 1 fourth power is, or the fourth root of negative 64. Now, we can assume that this came from like a polynomial like x to the fourth plus 64 is equal to zero. And we know in like a polynomial like this with a degree of n is equal to four, that there's going to be four different solutions. And those solutions may be complex. So, in order to figure it out, we're going to have to do the same protocol we did last time. We're going to define our complex number v as negative 64. And the first step is we're going to have to rewrite this in polar form. So one way we can do that is we can plot it on the complex plane in the negative real axis. We can say that is negative 64. And using this point, we have to try and figure out what the magnitude is and the phase is. The magnitude is just the radial distance from the origin. That's just 64. And the phase is the angle between this radius and the positive x-axis, which is just pi. And we have to be sure to include this uh, plus 2 pi times n to include any higher or lower values of theta that all correspond to this point here. Now we can rewrite our complex number as just z is equal to 64 times e raised to the i times pi plus 2n pi. That is this number in polar form. So the next step is to try and figure out what the fourth root of that is, essentially raising this entire thing to the one-fourth. And we can distribute out the one-fourth exponent here and here to get that this is equal to 64 to the one-fourth times e raised to the i of pi plus 2n pi times one-fourth, or just divided by four. Now we can simplify this up a bit. Uh, let's try and look at what 64 to the one-fourth is. You can either try and compute it by hand or calculator, or you may remember that 64 to the one-half, which is the square root of 64, that's just eight, and the square root of eight is two radical two. So 64 to the one-fourth is just two radical two. And we can distribute this one-fourth here in the exponent to get e raised to the i of pi over 4 plus n times pi over 2. So this equation here tells us all the information about the four different solutions. Now, each of the four solutions in polar form, they're going to have the same magnitude and all four solutions are going to be separated by an angle of pi over 2, which is just the unit circle, like the angle of the unit circle, divided by 4. So they're all going to start, well, the points are going to start off at this initial angle and all be separated by that angle of pi over 2. So we can plot those out. Well, we can first write out what those points are. We know that the points are going to be, like in coordinate notation, radical 2 comma pi over 4, then we know if we add, we can also add pi over 2 to the angle to get 2 radical 2 comma 3 pi over 4, 2 radical 2 comma 5 pi over 4, and 2 radical 2 comma 7 pi over 4. So these are the coordinates that describe the four solutions, and we can plot those out right down here. So 2 radical 2 comma pi over 4, that's just going to be right about here. Like if this is 2 and this is 2, then the radial line here is going to be 2 radical 2. And this angle here is going to be pi over 4. So that's one solution. Then we can plot out the next point, 2 radical 2 comma 3 pi over 4, which is going to be right here. Then 2 radical... Oops, 2 radical 2 comma 5 pi over 4, which is right here, and 2 radical 2 comma 7 pi over 4 is right here. So if you notice, all four points have the same distance away from the origin, 
They start out uh, like shifted by a phase of pi over 4, but they're all separated by an angle of pi over 2. So since these points are our four solutions, we can simplify or clean this up a bit by rewriting it in Cartesian form. So let's just do let's just do out one example. The example of uh, two radical two e to the i pi over four. We know that this is going to be equal to two radical oops two radical two, and we're going to expand out this exponent to this Euler's formula cosine of pi over 4 plus i times sine of pi over 4 which is just 2 whoops, 2 radical 2 times 1 over radical 2 plus i times 1 over radical and if we distribute this out, we're going to get that this is equal to 2 plus 2i. There we go. So this solution here, or this point here, corresponds to z is equal, I'm just going to write z1 to denote the four different solutions, 2 plus 2i. And we can rewrite all four of these in Cartesian form, we can say z2 is equal to negative 2 plus 2i. This point here corresponds to, let's say, z3 is equal to negative 2 minus 2i. And this point here corresponds to z4 is equal to positive 2 minus 2i. Now one thing to note is here we have four different solutions, and of those four solutions, we have two pairs of complex numbers. Sorry, of complex conjugates. We have 2 plus 2i, 2 minus 2i, as well as negative 2 plus 2i and negative 2 minus 2i. So overall, we can say that the fourth root of negative 64 is just plus or minus 2 plus or minus 2i. And there we have it.